In this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of the toolbar. That's the row of icons at the bottom of the interface in LumaFusion. We're not gonna go deep into each one of these as I've covered many of these in other videos. However, we are gonna go through each one of them one by one. This is the toolbar. And if at any point you forget what any of these are, if you tap and hold on the cog slash question mark in the bottom right corner, a tooltip pops up over each one of these telling you what they are. We're gonna start over here on the very left with the projects browser. When I tap that, it takes me to the projects browser where I can access or edit or open any of my other projects. We've already explored this in chapter four, so we're gonna skip this one for now. Tap it again to go back to your edit window. The next icon is the headers icon. That opens up the track headers for each of the video and audio tracks. From here, I can do things that affect the entire track. For example, the first icon, the link button, allows me to unlink or link the entire track at once. I can also unlink or relink an individual clip, and we'll come to this tool in just a moment. But for now, this allows me to do the entire track all at once. By default with linking on, if I grab a clip like this that has audio and another piece of video attached to it and move it around, they all move together. But as soon as I unlink that, the audio in this case, because that's the track that I unlinked, will stay put. The next icon is a lock, and that allows me to lock an entire track, just to protect it to make sure that I don't accidentally make any changes to it. The next icon, the eye, allows me to temporarily hide an entire video track. And to the right of that, the speaker icon is a mute button that allows me to mute individual timeline tracks. The next tool is the mixers. This allows me to adjust the audio levels of the entire track at once. To the left of the slider, you'll see that same mute icon, and no, it's not duplicated. If I open both of these at once, you'll see there's just one mute icon that's shared by both tools. The next tool is the duplicate tool. If I select any video or audio clip and tap that tool, it will duplicate the clip. Easy enough, I'll undo that. The next one after that splits the audio from the video. So for example, here I have a clip that is video with audio on it. And if I tap this icon here, it'll separate the audio. Now, as we've discussed in other videos, when you detach the audio, you're not actually removing it from the video clip. If you look closely at the video clip, you'll see that it's just silenced. In fact, I could select that same AV clip again, tap the detach audio again, and get another version of that audio. I'll go ahead and undo those. Next is the linking tool. If I select a clip like this audio clip here and then tap the link tool, it'll unlink it, separating it from the video. That allows me to then move that video around while leaving that audio clip in place. If I tap that audio clip again and then tap the linking tool again, it'll relink it. Notice that as I select one of these clips, again, audio there, and tap the link, it unlinks just that clip. However, if I select the entire base video clip and tap that unlink icon, it unlinks all the clips that are attached to it. If I tap it again, it'll relink everything that's above or below it. The next tool, the pencil, simply brings us into the editing room. We can also get to that by double tapping on any one of the clips. And that brings us to the presets tool. When I open that, you'll see that I have access to color effects presets, our motion presets, audio presets, and more. I'll go back here and add a black and white look to this, which perfectly segues to the next tool, the clipboard. With that video clip selected, if I tap on the clipboard, this will allow me to copy or cut this clip to the clipboard. It'll copy the entire clip with all of its assets, but as you're gonna see in a moment, you can then paste only what you want into another clip. I'll go ahead and tap on copy, scrub to this clip here, open the clipboard tool again, and I'm going to paste, and here I can choose exactly what I want to paste. I just wanna paste the color effects, so I'll make sure that's selected, and then tap on paste. And that pastes the black and white look to that clip. If nothing is selected on the timeline, and I paste, the copied clip is pasted with effects and all. I'll undo that. The next tool is the multi-select tool. This is actually a pretty robust tool that I'm gonna cover in depth in another video, but for now, I'll just show you quickly what it can do. I already have a clip selected. I will then tap the multi-select tool and tap another clip next to it. So now both of these clips are simultaneously selected. This means I can act on both of them at the same time, for example, by deleting both of them or moving them both. But in this case, what I'll do is jump back into the effects editor and choose original color, removing the black and white effect from both of those at once. To deselect everything, just tap that tool again. The next tool, the scissors, allows me to split a clip. So let's say that I have my playhead here and I tap the scissors, it splits that into two separate clips. The next tool is add clip. This allows me to add something to the timeline. I could add a voiceover, transition, blank clip, main title, or overlay title here. 
What's actually available will depend on where the playhead is in the timeline. After that, we'll see the delete icon, which as you might have guessed, deletes whatever is selected. And that brings us to the layout options. This allows me to choose a different layout for my LumaFusion workspace. I can swap the browser and the canvas. I can have a much larger browser and swap that as well. I can have a huge timeline, small canvas, and no browser, or I can swap the timeline out for the browser. The default view is this one in the top left. To the right of that is the share tool, allowing us to share or export our projects. And then finally, the settings and help menu. This gives us access to all the settings and preferences in LumaFusion, as well as the help system. And of course, if you tap and hold on that, it pops up that menu overlay again. And that covers all the tools in the toolbar.